Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing my summer reading recommendations. So I'm going to confess now, usually I try and do my seasonal reading recommendation videos outside um, in nature. However, however, I am really, really struggling for time at the moment and getting out and finding a spot and setting up and all of that just isn't possible at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to film it sat here and I will try and take some b-roll of the beautiful summer that we are having here in the UK and overlay some of that on this video. It's my plan. Um, if that doesn't work out I will delete this section and you will be none the wiser. So I have 10 great summer reading recommendations for you. So summer to me I quite often want an easy read or something that's set in a hot country, something quite quick, fast paced. That's the sort of thing I want in the summer. I don't always get it, but <laughs> that's, that's what I'm aiming for. So these 10 books are books that sort of fit that brief, I suppose. And they're all fantastic books in their own right to read at any time of the year. So let's begin. Number one. The Borrowers by Mary Norton. This is a children's book. This is quite an old children's book. I expect many of you have heard of it, but in this we follow a family of borrowers who are very, very small people who live in a house and they borrow things from the house. Uh, spoons and thimbles and bits and pieces that they then populate their own house with. And the sort of teenage daughter whose name escapes me, wants to sort of get out and explore more, but she, she, you know, seeing humans is seen as like, you can't do that because they'll squash you. So um, yeah, this is such a charming book. And I reread really this to my nine year old Sam a couple of years ago, and I was worried that it wouldn't hold up the test of time because I read it when I was a child and it felt um, quite old fashioned then um, it certainly felt a lot more old fashioned when I read it to Sam, but he adored it and so did I because it just is cozy and delightful and an absolutely great read for the summer if you want something a bit lighter and easier. The next book I'm gonna re recommend is The Time Traveller's Wife by Audrey Niffenegger. So I'm recommending this for two reasons. Firstly, because it is really fast paced, it sucks you in, you cannot put it down, it is a love story, which generally is not my jam, but we follow Henry, who is a time traveller, uh, and his wife, who has to sort of wait while he goes off to different periods of time. Um, I won't tell you any more than that if you haven't read it, because it's so masterfully done, and you kind of just need to get into the world um, to see it. But also, on, I think it's on Sky Atlantic, there is currently a new miniseries adaptation of this book. And I binged all five episodes last night and it was fantastic. So it's one of those where you could pick it up now, pick the book up now and then watch the miniseries and sort of see the differences. And there are definitely differences, but I think it's working really well. The film with Eric Banner was also fantastic. Um, so recommend that also. Next, I'm going to recommend Me Before You by JJ Moyes. This is quite a sad book. This is about a young woman who becomes a carer for a paraplegic man and falls in love with him. And it, is, it does have a very sad ending, but the character of, I have forgotten her name, but the character, <laughs> the main female character is really funny, really quirky, just, She's one of those characters that is so much fun to spend time with. I would absolutely recommend this book. I've read, there's, this is a trilogy now, so I've read all three of these and they're really, really lovely books, perfect holiday reads. So I would recommend. The next book I'm gonna recommend is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. In this one, we follow a mother and daughter as they move to a new town. They move around a lot. They have a secret, but we don't really know what it is. And it's about them getting involved in this town and the social politics of this town and the effect that that has on each of them and their relationship with each other. And I devoured this book when I read it. It's obviously had 
huge acclaim it's been very very popular if you haven't got to it yet i would recommend picking it up this summer okay fifth on the list is a book that will just cuddle you and that is the house in the cerulean sea by tj clune where we follow linus who assesses sort of foster homes for magical children and he gets sent to a foster home and it's not quite what he expected and this just gave me all the warm feels it's a delightful delightful book and it is guaranteed to put a smile on your face okay so the next one is not quite so heartwarming and that is The Beekeeper of Aleppo by Christy Lefteri. And this follows a family who are fleeing Aleppo, uh, trying to get to the UK and the challenges that they face. It is really, really hard to read in places. It's really upsetting. I, I'm not really sure why I put it on this list. <laughs> I think because it's set in a hot country, but it, I think it's a really important book and it's one of the best books that I've read about sort of fleeing conflict zones and trying to get to uh, the UK and it was beautifully done and heartbreaking and it definitely is a fast read so would recommend that one. Next up we have another romance. Holy moly there's been a few romances on this. Whose channel is this? And that is Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is laugh out loud funny. We follow Chloe Brown who has fibromyalgia and she makes a decision at the beginning of the book to stop letting that sort of dictate and she's gonna write almost a, a list of things that she wants to achieve in order to get her life back on track. And this was such a fun book. It's, it is a romance, but it's just the humor in it makes it fabulous and yeah, really enjoyed it definitely one to read if your brain is feeling a bit full and you just want some light-hearted brilliant entertainment next up is a book that i have read very very recently and that is great circle by maggie shipstead so i've put this on the list just because the characters are characters you'll fall in love with and you can quite easily spend your summer with them. It's a larger book, it's like 600 odd pages. So you can sort of chip away at it over the summer and by the end of it, you will feel like you've made some new friends in Marion and Jamie and Caleb, some of the best characters I have seen written in a long time. And in this we follow Marion, I'm sure many people are, are aware of this. This is currently shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction. But Marion becomes a female pilot in a time where female pilots aren't super common. And it's about her journey through life and her love of that and where it leads her. So yeah, brilliant book. I recommend you pick it up this summer. And I'm hoping that it wins the Women's Prize, which gives you more incentive to pick it up, yes? I don't know at the time of filming whether it wins or not, but I will know by the time this video goes up. So I'll try and put a comment saying, yay or ah. So yeah, anyway, the next book I wanna recommend is The Girl with the Loudon Voice by Abby Dare. This is set in Nigeria. And we follow a young girl, a Dani, and sort of her love and her fight for education through many, many traumas and setbacks. And her resilience in this book is so uplifting. It's, it's a very difficult book to read in a lot of places, but overall, I would say it is a book of hope and fighting against the odds, and I would highly recommend, and I think it works brilliantly as a summer read. The final book I'm gonna recommend is Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. This is a Greek myth retelling, and in this we follow Ariadne and her sister, and sort of her story. So Ariadne marries Theseus after he kills the Minotaur, her brother the Minotaur. Uh, and then we follow her story from there, what happens with Theseus and what happens with her sister. And I'm not gonna go into it if you don't know too much about the myths because it would spoil it, but it's a beautifully told tale. Obviously it's set in Greece, which is nice and sunny. <laughs> That's how we got its space on this list. Um, 
but it was a five star read i read it last year it's definitely very different to other greek myth retellings that i have read so yeah definitely recommend giving that one a whirl okay and that is it that's 10 amazing books that i would recommend as great books to pick up in the summer let me know what is on your summer tbr and i will leave my spring reading recommendations here if you're not quite ready for summer um who's not ready for summer but there's also great recommendations here um and i will see you very soon with another one thanks guys